The Great War. The War to End All Wars. The Forgotten War. Between 1914 and 1919, the globe was torn apart by World War I, a destructive conflict between the Allies and the Central Powers. Nearly everyone in the early 20th century felt the war's effects, not just on distant battlefields, but also in communities on the home front. The southern United States, South Carolina in particular, was spared no exception to the pains of war. The soldiers fighting on the front lines were not alone in facing the war's hardships. Women and African Americans, both abroad and at home, suffered socioeconomic tribulations brought on by the conflict. With the 100-year anniversary of the war's end, World War I is now anything but a forgotten war. The occasion has rekindled interest and inspiration for people to look back and reflect on World War I's effects, not just globally, but here in the great state of South Carolina. In honor of World War I centennial in 2019, Lander University has taken this opportunity to set up a symposium which was made possible by a generous grant from the South Carolina Humanities. We made a grant proposal to South Carolina Humanities, which is the state organization that distributes funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities. And that grant proposal said that Lander University in Greenwood, South Carolina, is ready and willing to host a symposium on the South and World War I. And there were three main reasons. One is, in 2018, 2019, we are in the centennial year of the conclusion of World War I. Fighting ends in November of 1918, and the Treaty of Versailles is signed in June of 1919. So we're 100 years beyond the war. The second reason was we had had a debate in Greenwood about a memorial to the fallen soldiers of world wars, which included World War I. And that debate about how to honor the fallen soldiers, or what to have on the memorial, had involved a court case and much public discussion. And so we had had a debate about commemoration and historic preservation in our town. And thirdly, we had a historian on our faculty, Ryan Floyd, who had published a book with LSU Press, along with his co-editor Matthew Downs of the University of Mobile. And that collection brought together a lot of information about the South and World War I, and all of the ways that we think about World War I affecting the South in its politics, and its changes of economic life and the modernization of the economy, and particularly all of the transformation of social life, families, race relations, the roles of women, uh, and how people came back from the war and, and did not accept the way things had been. So for those three big reasons, we put forth that proposal and South Carolina Humanities accepted and fully funded that grant proposal. The symposium is a series of panels where experts gather with the goals of enlightening students and general audiences to better understand how World War I impacted the South and to promote Greenwood and upstate South Carolina's history. South Carolina ETV had the privilege of catching some of these experts, and in the following video segments, they will discuss various educational topics about World War I and its impacts on South Carolina. Persons who are learning about uh, American history, a lot of times we'll focus on World War II. And that was a very important conflict in world history, a very important conflict in American history. And it does shape the way that we think about the United States' role in the world. Uh, world War II led to uh, demands uh, for persons who did not have as much civic uh, and political rights uh, to want to have voting rights and, and participation in the economy, participation in politics. So we think about things coming out of World War II. And the problem with that notion is that those things did not begin uh, with just World War II. 
Instead, most of that began with World War I. And so it is World War I that has women leaving the home, going uh, into the workplace, going to college, and uh, accelerating their request for voting rights, and then the passage of the amendment to the Constitution that gave women uh, the right uh, to vote. So after World War I, that happens. It is after World War I when you have a very large percentage, uh, particularly from South Carolina, of black soldiers who come back and want to begin talking about more equal rights uh, for non-white citizens. Uh, and so a lot of this social change came out of World War I and then grew towards World War II. But it's also the idea that after World War I, the United States is starting to be seen as a world power. And so this was a European war. Uh, we tried to stay out of it, but then President Wilson made the decision uh, to have the U.S. participate in the war, and we were seen as not just a large economy with a large population, but a large and important political and military power. And that, of course, increases uh, very much after World War I, and that increases to World War II when we play an even more important role in kind of world politics. And the South is important here because the South has always contributed a large percentage of troops uh, to American wars. And certainly troops had been sent to wars uh, outside of the boundaries of the United States before 1917. But World War I is the first big foreign war where U.S. soldiers are sent abroad and then come home. And having been abroad and seen a little bit of another society, perhaps then reflect on what societal changes uh, would I want to see in my own country. And so that's one of the big things that we see happen is that uh, women and, and uh, black Americans come back with greater expectations of what roles they should play. And then we see, as we have had in Greenwood and many other places in the United States, a memorial uh, to those fallen soldiers of World War I and the listing of those fallen soldiers' names is then uh, first put up, uh, segregated by race, uh, but then there are demands um, to not do that, that all of these soldiers were American citizens and, and fought uh, and, and then died uh, for, for freedoms of U.S. citizens.